This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Sometimes a random event can lead you down a path that you never would have imagined otherwise and ultimately it can lead to something pretty cool. And this video is about one of those experiences. So I made this productivity device and it's been a little bit of a game changer, both in terms of my focus and just getting things done. It makes getting through your to-do list a little bit more fun. But the funny thing is I didn't actually set out to make this. It kind of happened by accident. So I sort of just stumbled upon it as I was experimenting with this receipt printer. So before I can show you all the features that I've packed into this and how it works, I've got to take you right back to the beginning where the story all started. So it all started when I decided to do a little bit of component shopping, you know, for things that I 100% definitely need. Pie Hut is my go-to, so I went there and just started looking around to see what's new. And I came across something I really didn't think I would see on a website like this, a receipt printer. And at first I just had to make sure that what I'm reading as a receipt printer is actually what I think it is and this isn't some technical term that I'm not aware of and yes it is indeed just a receipt printer. So you can probably guess what happened next, I stared at the screen for a little bit and yeah, I bought one. No idea why I bought or what the heck. And so the box turned up at my front door a few days later and I was weirdly excited to see what a receipt printer actually looks like up close. And after taking a closer look, the first thought that I had was, how do I use this thing? It's got two sets of cables and it came with no manual, just a sticker at the back that had some information on it. Inside, there was a roll of paper and also a self-test receipt, so at least I knew it was working. On the back of the printer, there's a sticker that's got some really useful information. Firstly, it tells us that it takes between five and nine volts, which is good to know. And then we've got two sets of wires. This has five pins and that's for data transfer. We'll come back to that one later. For now, I just wanna get this thing powered up. So I'm gonna use this power cable here, hook it up to a bench top and give it somewhere between five and nine volts. And then we'll see how this thing behaves. And so I connected the printer to my benchtop power supply using a couple of jumper cables and I fed it 9 volts. And I was met with the reassuring blinking of an LED. When the receipt printer is powered on correctly, if you press the little LED button, it ejects a little bit of paper. So it's a good starting point because at least you know the mechanics are working as they should do. So after some googling, I found some more documentation on how this works, but to be honest, a lot of this went over my head. And so because the manual really didn't make any sense to me, I decided to do the next best thing, which was just randomly start pressing the button. And so after a lot of trial and error, I was able to get it to print a self-test receipt similar to the one that it shipped with. And to be honest, I'd barely achieved anything at this stage, but I, I felt pretty good. And we reach an interesting part of the story here, because after this point, the receipt printer just sat on my desk for a little while. Every now and then I'd have a look at it and think, what can I actually make with this? But I was drawing blanks, and so I decided to leave it until an idea hit me. And then after a few days, I had an idea. I suddenly remembered how when you go to a restaurant, the waiter comes and takes your order. But in the back, the kitchens use a really particular system to keep track of orders that are pending and orders that have been fulfilled. 
So they use these little bits of receipt paper with the order written on it and they have a rail that they put them on. The minute the order is done, the ticket gets taken off the rail and it gets put on a little hole punch thing so that everybody knows what's been done and what's left to do. And I thought, why can't I use this as a way of making it a little bit more interesting to get through my daily to-do list? So I could have the printer print out what's on my to-do list, I could rip the paper off and put it up on the wall, and then the minute that task is complete, I can put it aside and it just gives you that little bit of dopamine boost every time you get something done. But instead of getting bits of receipt paper and writing on the task, because that would be a little bit boring, I'll have the receipt printer connect to my favourite to-do list app, Todoist. I've been using this app for absolutely ages, it's my favourite app to help keep track of what I need to do, so I think this would be a good thing to connect to the 3D printer, given that I'm already using it on a regular basis. Then I had a look at my components organisers and thought, well, what else can I add into this? Of course, I'm going to need a microcontroller that has Wi-Fi capabilities, so I decided to go for a standard ESP32 dev kit. Then I decided to add a very small OLED screen just to give some visual feedback and make the whole thing look a little bit nicer. I also thought, let's add in some LEDs. LEDs make everything look a little bit nicer, but it'll also give again an added layer of visual feedback and I've got some ideas on how I can use that later. And at this point I had to really stop myself from adding in any more components, so I decided to put my components away and get to work. And as with all my electronics projects, the first step is to get everything put on a breadboard to test the idea. Here's the code that I used and I'll leave links to all the files that I used in this project in the description below. I've got everything set up now. So we've got our 9 volt power supply here, ESP32 OLED, our NeoPixel and of course our receipt printer. We've also got a voltage regulator here so that we don't fry our ESP32. And our button which is going to print out tasks on our to-do list. I've gone ahead and put a little bit of a dummy task on the on the Todoist app just to see if this works. So now is the moment of truth. We're going to go and connect everything and fingers crossed we don't blow everything up. Let's have a look. Okay, so the blue light means it's connecting to the Wi-Fi. Okay, it's still trying to connect to the Wi-Fi, but it seems to be struggling. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and re-upload the code to the ESP and make sure I've got the right Wi-Fi details and then we'll circle back. Well, just as I was about to hit the pause button on the camera, it went ahead and connected to the white light sort of heartbeat pattern means that it's connected to your wi-fi you can see on the screen that it says ready so now is the moment of truth i'm going to hit this button and we should see our task print out from the thermal printer so here goes nothing okay and it's not working, which is strange. So I'm gonna go ahead and have a little debug session and then we'll see what the situation is on the other side of that. Right, so it turns out the issue was due to the way the ESP was making API calls. So I've modified the code with the help of ChatGPT. Now we're gonna restart it and hopefully everything should work as planned. So we'll restart the ESP. Lovely, so that connected to the Wi-Fi a lot quicker there. And now the moment of truth, guys, I'm gonna hit this button and what we should see is this should display how many tasks there are and it should go green with the LEDs. And of course, something should come out of the printer. So, there we go. And it's still, oh, wait, there we go. Yeah, I was just about to say it's not working. Here we have it, guys. There's our first printout. So that's task one of four that I've put on just to test. So let's go again. 
There we go, that's number two. The tasks themselves are just random, random things at the minute, but at least you know it's working. And there we go. So we've got task number four of four, and there's a little bonus thing there that I'll show you guys a little bit later in the video. But as far as we're concerned, we're able to print out to do this using this button and the printer. So we're making really good progress. I'm really happy. Now that the breadboard was working as intended, it was time to get a circuit board made so that I can make this a more complete project. So I fired up KiCad, started off by making a circuit diagram or schematic, and then I used that to make a full PCB design. And then it was off to this video sponsor, PCBWay. As I've started leveling up my electronics projects, it's been really helpful to know that I can get all my PCBs made from PCBWay. It's a really easy service, all you have to do is go onto their website, upload your Gerber files and you get an instant quote. And the delivery times are very reasonable as well. The PCBs I ordered for this project arrived at my doorstep in just over a week. The best part is, it's not just PCBs they do, they offer a whole host of manufacturing services including 3D printing, CNC machining and PCB assembly. So if you want to take your builds and projects to the next level, Check out PCBWay using the link in the description below and thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. For this project I tried experimenting with two different things. Firstly using thinner gauge wires and that's definitely something I'll be doing more of in upcoming projects. And I also wanted to have a go at using JST connectors and it just makes the assembly process so much easier so again that's something I'll be implementing a lot more of in future projects. And with the PCB assembled, it's time to jump over into Fusion 360 and make a model to hold all this together.
so I'm really happy with the way this project turned out. And now I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of how this all works. So you get things powered up by using a 9 volt DC power plug. Once everything powers on you'll see the LEDs flashing blue, that means it's trying to connect to both your Wi-Fi and your Todoist API. You'll know it's connected once the LEDs start doing a heartbeat pattern in white. Then you press the button and you'll see your tasks printing one at a time. In terms of the printouts themselves, I've kept it deliberately quite simple. So you get the date to help you keep track and then you get whatever is next on your to-do list. I've also planned it so you get a little tick area on the right side so once you've done your task, you get the satisfaction of ticking it off. On the screen you'll see how many tasks you've got completed so that helps you keep motivated. And once you're all done, you get this nice inspirational message and a rainbow light show from the LEDs. And if you want to view your tasks all together, all you have to do is long press the button and then the print will print out all the tasks that you've got on your Todoist app in one go. So if you've made it to this point in the video, you might be thinking, what have I actually gotten out of all this other than a really over-engineered to-do list printer? And you'd be right to think that, but what this printer does is it makes productivity that much more fun. It makes it a little bit more enjoyable to get through your to-do list and feel a little bit of an accomplishment when you tick it off. And in a world where the fun seems to be disappearing out of everything, I think that's something we can all do with a little bit more of.